Hey, Brian Beeler back in the Storage View Lab for the second time today. Incidentally, while we were making the last video, the FedEx Express guy pulled up to deliver this little gem. Now, this is a hotly anticipated item. It's been heavily debated on our subreddit. So let's get into it and take a look at the hardware. We are, of course, talking about the HPE Micro Server 10 Plus. So let's see what we've got. We know that it's a, uh, a pretty decent spec from the email we received, but we are nonetheless excited to take a look at what's inside. Let's pull out some of these goodies. Power supply, they did uh, incidentally in this version pull the power supply out of the system that let them go from two fans to a one fan design to save some noise and, and uh, space. Pull this guy out. Wow, this is uh, really remarkably small. So here we are, ProLiant Micro Server Gen 10 Plus. Um, yeah, I mean, we've seen it in the pictures and had numerous phone calls about the system. It's hard to really conceptualize online how small it is until you plop it out on the table here. And it's, I mean, it's really short. It's, uh, it's a square on top. I mean, it's just, it's small. It's a, you know, maybe two book widths wide. So uh, overall, just out of the box, it looks, um, it looks really great, looks pretty fun. Now if we look at the front, of course we've got the uh, HP ID, a couple USB ports, indicator lights, and power buttons. Um, but really what's interesting here is if we swing it around the back, we can see that uh, we've got our, our four NICs down below, a bunch of USB uh, ports display connections, power over here on the side. We do have this uh, expansion port, and then we've got the uh, management connection for ILO. So we do have the ILO module in this. It's a physical module that, uh, that is an option on this system, uh, but it's uh, definitely something from a management standpoint that we're excited to have, and it's a big selling point of this system in particular. And in fact, one of the reasons why they went with the Pentium or Xeon CPU options in this build was so that they could get ILO in this design and have it ready at market launch. They could have done it with the AMD processors, it just would have required a little more engineering and ILO might not have been ready for this launch. But with the uh, uh, Xeon that we have inside and with the Pentium, that's uh, certainly available. Let's go ahead and take the lid off and as I do that, we'll pull in a little bit closer so you can see the insides of this uh, little server. Once we remove these two thumb screws, it'll little push back about a quarter inch and lift straight up. Now, one thing that's interesting is the bezel comes in a locked position so that you can't easily access the drives inside. If we lift these clips up, there's one on either side that puts the bezel in an unlocked position and it can be gently removed with a little pressure at the bottom. So as we spin this around, we'll take a look at the core part where the drives go. We've got room for four large form factor drives. Now there's a lot of discussion around should HPE have put two and a half inch drives or at least offered that as an option in this system. And yeah, you can get SATA splitters. You could probably fit eight SSDs in here without much problem. And with the PCIe slot open in the back, where we could put a 10 gig card. You can actually get some pretty decent performance with the Xeon uh, processor in here, the RAM, the PCIe slot, and, and some SSDs. But HPE contends that this is really designed for mainstream small businesses and that the value proposition of hard drives is still what these guys are after. So we'll go with that for now, and that's fine, but we may want to experiment with this a little bit later and put some flash in here just for fun. One interesting note is you'll see these drive screws here. HPE puts these in. Uh, they actually end up acting as rails. So if we take a look at uh, one of these Iron Wolf NAS hard drives we've got sitting around, you would just put uh, the screws in the front and the back. 
and then that just slots right in and locks into place. So that's a pretty neat mechanism to simplify the insertion of the drives. These drive bays are not hot swappable, so you know, that's one more thing to consider. But anyway, once the drives are in there, you're gonna put the, the uh, bezel back on and the, the cover and it'll be all locked up and probably won't need to be manipulated unless a drive fails. There are a couple other interesting shots we wanna take a look at. So let's reposition one more time and then we'll show you a couple more key hardware features of this system. We've moved the camera to an overhead position and actually removed two more screws that holds the board into place. Now this will give us a great shot of the innards of this micro server. So this is a pretty neat design from a serviceability standpoint. Sometimes there are sacrifices made when you have to micro microize something that makes it hard to also have the serviceability features that uh, businesses want. So what we can see if, as we've pulled this tray out a little bit, over here in the corner, we've got the data leads and power leads for our four SATA bays in the front. Tucked underneath, we've got our PCIe expansion slot that'll work with 10 gig cards, it'll work with a dedicated RAID card, uh, should someone require that. There's an I, the ILO on board that connects over here to the management port. We've obviously got our CPU underneath here now this is an interesting heatsink design. So as HP has dealt with the compactness of the server, they've thrown up another radiator on the back so that as the air gets sucked across over the system, it goes through the main fins, but the fan draws an additional, uh, probably a quite a bit amount of heat off of this, uh, this guy here as it, as it blows out the back. Now as noted, there's just a single fan design here. And when they've pulled the power supply out of the system, that's enabled HPE to go with a single fan design, a little quieter and a little more compact footprint. As we keep scrolling towards me here, we've got uh, one 16 gig dim. There's another slot that's open uh, that we'll be able to put another 16 gig dim in uh, that's actually en route. So overall, we've got a really neat little system here. It's going to be fun to play with it and see what it can do. And that's probably what we should do next is reassemble this thing, put some drives in it and get this thing testing. So keep an eye on storagereview.com. We'll post the full review there in the next couple weeks as the testing wraps up. And until then, thanks for watching.